Hey, I'm Connor, and I'm currently taking a well-deserved break from studying to hang out with my friends. I go to college at the Georgia Institute of Tech, and I'm sure to be a top-notch architect one day soon. Now I just have one thing to deal with, then I can properly enjoy my night off. Oh, here she is. Connor, I can't do this anymore. I don't want to hurt you, but sorry, we should stop seeing each other. Ah, well, every ending is a new beginning. <laughs> Cheers. I was the master of getting girlfriends I'm tired of to break up with me. It was great. As this way, no one could ever accuse me of being a bad boy. <sighs> what to do now? I reluctantly had to find a new challenge then. Oh, I'm sorry. I was just going to turn this in. Um, that's okay. Just trying to find one more paper. Uh, um, what's your name? <laughs> I'm Connor. Hi. Hmm, her sparkling eyes, her shiny hair, her soft hands. But ugh, why was suddenly some nerd dragging me away from the hot girl and into a corner? Before I could ask him what was going on, he started waving a photo of this girl in my face. So it turns out this dude is called Patrick, and the girl in the photo is Paige, his girlfriend. Their parents are both influential sorts and organize their whole engagement. Sounds great, right? I mean, she's pretty cute. But no, he wanted me to find a way to make Paige break up with them. I've heard a lot about you. I, I need your help. I can't do this myself. <laughs> huh? Sure, I get it. A real man will never be the one to break up first. I might be able to help, but first, let's see what kind of person she is. The conversation started to become super serious. From the sound of it, this page girl was a genuine, good-natured girl with a vulnerable side. So this needed to be handled with extra care, so that there wouldn't be any awkward family provocations for my clients. Hmm, perhaps... Nah, this way wouldn't work. Neither would that way. I was about to give up when suddenly Patrick stacked a pack of money, approximately a thousand dollars on the table. Help me, then it's all yours. Whoa, that was a lot of money to me. It would get me the magnificent PS5 of my dreams. <sighs> Besides, with my charm and handsome looks, I could make Paige fall in love with me and leave Patrick in no time. Genius! My debut had to be spectacular. So I looked online and hired some people pretending to be thugs to block Paige's path. Then I'd waltz in and rescue her. The plan was all set, so I leisurely walked to the rendezvous spot, but... Oh no! Who knew those guys were real thugs? They threatened us, asked us to hand over all our belongings, then forced us to go to some abandoned warehouse. Oh my god! The $1,000 was so not worth losing my life for. Yes, I was somewhat afraid, but my flirtatious instinct kicked in and I turned to Paige and started talking to her. Oh man, she's super sweet. And I noticed that when she talks about something that interests her, she crinkles her nose. She's so cute, but most of all, she's really smart. Why, you ask? Because just an hour later, the cops showed up and arrested the thugs. Turns out, before Paige handed over her belongings, she quickly texted the thug's license plate to a friend and asked her to call the cops. Phew! And, luckily for me, thanks to this destiny meeting, I got a little more information about her and learned that Paige was planning to learn Spanish to major in tourism there. But there's one more important thing. That is, I think, I have a crush on her. She's not like any other girl I've met before. I want to win her heart, truly, not just because of the plan. It will be the best of both worlds. Patrick gets to be free of Paige, as requested, but she won't end up a lovelorn girl because she'll have a new handsome boyfriend by her side. Yep, that'll be me. <laughs> There was just one problem. In all the commotion of the day, I'd forgotten to ask Paige for her number. Oops. I had asked Patrick for it and then texted her, but sadly didn't receive a response. Hmm. I needed to be smart about this, so I decided to pretend to be a Spanish tutor. Yeah, I can't speak Spanish, but with my charm, that's no big deal, right? I created a flashy profile and told Patrick to pretend to surf and accidentally find me. Then show Paige. And so, ding! Hola, yo soy Professor Connor. But wait, sheesh! If only I'd studied Spanish harder in high school. And now the extent of my Spanish were just a few words I'd picked up from binge-watching Money Heist. So I just copied down Spanish lessons off YouTube and taught these to Paige. I don't know if it's because of my teaching skills or my charisma, but Paige seemed to think I was legit. <laughs> However, my flirting tricks weren't going so well. I knew she liked me. I mean, who wouldn't like me? Besides, she gave me these cute looks and laughed at my jokes. Our chemistry was undeniable. So when I reached over and placed my hand on top of hers, I felt sparks fly. But then she gave me this awkward look and moved her hand away. 
She liked me, right? So why was she acting like this? I never failed at flirting. Feeling frustrated, I was trudging my way up the street when, huh? Was that Patrick happily holding hands with a girl? I recognized the long hair. It was Paige. Ugh, why can't she drop her lousy boyfriend already? And why won't she date me instead? I was about to leave, but the more I thought about it, the more resentful I became. So I bribed a little boy to run up to Paige and say, Why aren't you with Connor, you cheater? Mean, huh? But <laughs> Patrick would be pleased as he now had a legitimate excuse to break up with her anyway. But when the girl turned around, I realized that she wasn't Paige. The poor girl looked completely dumbfounded. Patrick started yelling at her and pulling on her arm so hard she almost fell over. Huh? Where's the nerd Patrick? And that wasn't cool at all. Then he raised his hand to hit her, but I zoomed in front of him. Stop! No reason to hit a woman, bro! Patrick immediately grabbed my collar. You dare play tricks with my Becky, huh? Seeing that, the shocked girl quickly ran away. No, no, I thought it was Paige, so I hired the boy just to give you an excuse to break up with her. Calm down, bro. Patrick reassessed the situation, then he cleared his throat and said, <clears throat> Oh, well, uh, I was bored of Becky anyway, thanks. I was still shocked by this jerky side of Patrick when he immediately said, uh, By the way, you can stop the plan with Paige. I decided I like her now. Lately, she's been so full of life and less clingy. He told me he would still pay me, then he hopped into a taxi. Ugh, that's the version of Paige when she's with me. I gave her that zest of life, you jerk. Whatever. From this day forth, he was no longer my client, and I didn't want his stupid money. <sighs> it was time I told Paige what Patrick was really like. So I arranged to meet her in a cafe and told her everything. But when she got over the initial shock, she snapped at me. I know this is all part of your twisted fabrication. I mean, you lied about speaking Spanish, and now you're just making up stories to break Patrick and me up. Then she threw my textbook back at me and stormed off. Oh man, that Patrick is such a slimeball. But I couldn't blame her for believing him over me. I'd seen firsthand how much of a wolf in sheep's clothing he was. I tried to find proof to show Paige, but that jerk sure covered his tracks. His whole nerdy bookworm facade was flawless. And he was still this sluggish nerd, wobbly clutching the bus handle to go to school every day. Ugh, what a con man. Just you wait, Patrick. It's time the world saw your true face. With such determination, I continued to spy on him around town. Then one time, like every other day, I was on duty when a group stopped me, accompanied by Patrick pointing at me. Here's our sandbag! Uh-oh, looks like I was busted. The whole group gathered around me, fists ready. Yeah, I was pretty terrified. There's no way I could fight off a group this size. I raised my fists and prepared for pain, but then someone shouted, Stop! It was Paige. Suddenly, Patrick immediately changed his attitude and ordered the group to leave. He told Paige that I stole his stuff and his friends were helping him get it back. What? The swine! Connor isn't a thief, I know it for sure. There must be some misunderstanding. Please don't accuse him like that. Patrick's face changed. He grabbed Paige's hand and pulled her away, saying, We're getting engaged at the end of this month. Say no more. Okay, so I may have gate-crashed their engagement party, but I did hide at the back while the speeches were going on. Then to my surprise, as Patrick was talking, they both spotted me. Then Paige turned to him and shook her head. It hurt to see her like this. Perhaps she changed her mind. What do you mean? Is this because of Connor? Paige kept quiet while Patrick's parents were furious. How dare you cheat on my son? Who do you think you are? Paige, why is this happening? Really, Paige, say something. Feeling the pressure and injustice of it all, poor Paige looked distraught as she desperately tried to hold back her tears. I really couldn't stand seeing her like that, so I jumped out of the crowd to come to her defense. Everyone calm down. Paige is the sweetest, most amazing girl, and she deserves better than this jerk. Don't listen to him. He's a thief and a fiancé stealer. I was done listening to this guy's slander. So I threw a punch straight at his smug face. Yeah, the engagement party had sure turned chaotic. I looked at the wreckage in front of me. The consequences that I had caused. Okay, so maybe coming here wasn't my best idea. Actually, this was all my fault for ever agreeing to help Patrick in the first place. Or I shouldn't have been a jerk in the first place. Feeling deflated, I arrived home and saw that I'd received a message from Paige. My heart thudded as I opened it. Thank you for everything and try to practice your Spanish as it's even worse than mine. Goodbye. And that was the last text she sent me. After that, I spent a month trying to contact her but received no reply. 
So finally, I plucked up my courage to go to Paige's house and was told that she left for Spain earlier than scheduled. Perhaps the shock was so huge that Paige wanted to leave this place as soon as possible. It was all my fault. I was the biggest jerk in this story, and now I'd lost the girl. Alas, vengeance is bliss. So I walked inside, went straight to Patrick's table where he was wasted in the arms of a bunch of girls, took a picture, and sent it to his family. What is done by night appears by day, my friend. A few days later, I heard that after being exposed, Patrick's parents had confiscated all of his bank cards. Even his current girlfriend dumped him. Ha! So that sealed the final breakup deal for my special guest. And now, guess where I'm at? Looking for the girl of my life, duh. And this time, I'm going to make sure I don't screw it up. Being the awesome class president that I am means that it's my job to show this new transfer student, Willow, what's what around here. So, obviously this is the canteen. Heads up, don't eat the stew. Yuck. If you have any trouble finding something, just ask me. Well, I haven't seen you since middle school. What's up? Um, just still the same. Um, okay. Oh, you must be confused, but actually, I already know Willow. You see, we went to the same middle school together, but to be honest, we never really talked to each other back then. She seems to still be as quiet as always. Oh, and by the way, I'm Natalie, but you can call me Nat. The next few days, I saw Willow always sitting in a corner of the classroom and doodling. She looked kind of lonely, so being a nice person, I decided to sit and talk to her. Hey, Willow. Nice shirt. She just gave me this weak smile, then continued doodling. Ugh, talk about awkward. The best thing I could do was just to stupidly smile back, then swiftly left. I didn't really bother with Willow after that. I mean, I said hi if we passed in the hallway or something, but that was it. But it turns out Willow's introverted tendencies hadn't gone unnoticed by other students. As when we were on our school expedition to the woods, I overheard them talking about her. Do you all think that Willow seems a bit weird? Yeah, you're totally right. One time I asked to borrow her eraser, and she just gave it to me without saying anything. She didn't even look me in the eye, just kept on drawing. It was so strange. Huh? Are they seriously gossiping about a new kid? Yeah, so she might not be too sociable, but people should just learn how to respect someone's personal differences, right? Hey, Willow is new here. I don't think it's very nice of you to gossip like this. Also, she's my friend from middle school, so please stop this. But just wondering, has she always been like this? Um, yeah, I guess. Actually, I was quite surprised to see her in our class. In middle school, her grades weren't that good, so it's kind of odd that she's in the top set with us. I could see the whole group was looking at me with surprised eyes. But hey, that was a few years ago. Now, so maybe she's changed. I quickly corrected myself. Then, a few days later, I was standing by my locker when suddenly my best friend Layla appeared and gripped my shoulders. Oh my god, have you heard the news? Everybody is saying Willow only got into top set because her parents made a huge donation to the school. Can you believe that? What? Who's spreading this absurd rumor? I don't know, but someone's saying that she wasn't that smart in middle school. Oh. My. God. Was the rumor culprit me? It was me! I did it! At the expedition! Oh no, I, I didn't mean to! Oh, how could I let this happen? Then when I entered class, I noticed a sobbing willow being comforted by some other students. I felt horrible, so I also went over to her and tried to cheer her up. Don't worry about it, willow. Everyone knows this rumor is a lie. Why would anyone do such a thing? I mean, I just transferred here. Who would hate me so much to say something so mean? Oh man, I sure felt guilty. Oh, could things get any worse? Um, yeah, turns out they can. As after class, Miss Holmes suddenly asked me and Willow to stay behind. Oh no. Did she know I was the one who started the Willow rumor? I sat there sweating like a turkey at Thanksgiving, waiting for Miss Holmes to bust me. But then to my surprise, she said, Nat, please, can you help me get to the bottom of this horrible rumor? Phew, what a relief. But at the same time, I was freaking out. How was I supposed to catch the person responsible when I was the one who started the rumor? Albeit accidentally. Ugh, oh, what a dilemma. Wait a minute. I think I have an idea. What about I blame it on a troublemaker? It's not like they would care anyway. Whilst I'm a straight-A student, and getting into trouble for this could affect my chances to get into a prestigious college and ruin my life. Right at that moment, 
this guy called Bob shoved past us, then leaned against the wall and scrolled through his phone. Bingo. Gotcha. I put one hand against the wall and gave him a suspicious look. Hey, Bob. How you doing? Um, fine. So, about this Willow rumor? Who did you hear it from? Bob just shrugged and continued staring at his phone. Or did you do it? Maybe you were bored. So you spread the rumor to tease the new girl. Am I right? Or what? Only by then, Bob looked at me. What? Are you crazy? I don't know this Willow girl. Besides, I was off all last week sick. Now leave me alone. Oh man, this was a massive fail. Now what should I do? I needed a minute to think. Okay, don't panic, Nat. You're smart, so you'll think of something. That's when I turned and caught a glimpse of Willow's sad face. Don't worry, I will find out who did it. I comforted her. But inside I was screaming. I hated lying to her, but this was an accident. I never meant to spread that rumor. At that moment, Layla appeared and said she wanted to help. Great! Like this quest wasn't complicated enough. Ugh. Layla told us that she heard the rumor from this nerd, Ben. So we all tracked him down and asked him. But he heard it from some other dude, and it went on and on until a girl said that she heard it from Ashley. That's when I remembered that Ashley was on the talking group in the expedition. Oh no, I had to stop this encounter between us. So when they spotted Ashley, I started making weird noises and made out I had a stomachache. They were still going to her, so I had to scream loudly like I was in labor. In the medical room, I continued screaming as if I was in a lot of pain. The nurses diagnosed that it might be appendix pain, so I immediately needed to be transferred to the hospital. I instantly stopped screaming as soon as I heard that and said, it's just that time of the month. Phew, that was close. But at least I've successfully stopped them from investigating Ashley. Well, I spoke too soon, because right that second, Ashley walked into the medical room. But thank God she didn't mention me. Instead, she said Carl told her about it. Phew. To my luck, Carl was absent today, so the manhunt had to end here. It would unfortunately continue tomorrow, though. As we warily walked out of school, I glanced over at Willow and saw that she looked really down. Ugh, oh, that made me feel so bad. So to make it up for her, I asked her if she wanted to grab a sandwich. My treat, of course. And she said yes. Mmm, that sandwich was so good. And Willow seemed to enjoy hers, too. It was great to see her happier, so I decided to extend our trip by going to the mall. Willow kept on glancing at this dress, but it was out of her price range, so being the awesome friend that I am, I bought it for her as a gift. Well, that's the least I can do after everything I'd done to her, right? But then I noticed something weird. When I was standing at the counter to pay for it, I turned around and saw her smirking. Then when she saw me looking at her, she immediately smiled and thanked me for the dress. Huh, so strange. The next day, the rumor scavenger hunt continued. Ugh. We cornered Carl and questioned him, but he couldn't remember where he heard it from. Layla asked him to think carefully, and he just shrugged and said he had no idea. Layla got suspicious, so she immediately reported him to the principal's office. I didn't even have a chance to stop her. The next thing I knew, we were being called out over the loudspeaker and summoned to go to the principal's office. Then Carl confessed that yesterday he got an anonymous message via Facebook saying that they were willing to pay him if he agreed not to tell the name of the person who told him the rumor. He showed us his phone, but all the messages and the user account didn't exist anymore. That's right. I was the anonymous user who contacted Carl yesterday. Thank God I deleted the messages and the account on time. But things weren't that simple. The principal decided to suspend Carl for withholding information. Finally! My plan worked! But why wasn't I feeling happy about it? On the contrary, I felt... Bad. Really, really bad. Blaming someone for my mistake wasn't right. I couldn't do that to Carl. So I stood up and blurted out, It was me all along. I started the rumor, but it was an accident. Well, and that's it. Cue a two-week suspension. Now Willow is refusing to hear my apology and everyone else thinks I'm some villain. Only Layla has stuck by my side and remained adamant there was more to the story. Then, a few days later, when I was trying to curb my boredom with potato chips and a Love is Blind marathon, Layla came by and told me the shocking news. There may be a chance that I wasn't the person who spread the rumor about Willow. The thing is, Layla continued asking around school and ended up with a girl named Rosa, who had a reputation for gossiping. Rosa told Layla that she was in the bathroom when suddenly a girl in the cabin next to her started telling her about the rumor. Rosa found it odd, so she bent down to see who it was, but the only thing she could see was a pair of pink Nike Air Force One. 
Then Layla asked me, You know who always wears those, right? I nodded. But objectively, there could be other girls who own the same shoes, correct? Fortunately, Rosa also noticed an important detail that will help us close the case. The right shoe has a tear mark. I checked our suspect's shoes, and they match. So we finally knew who really did it. We just needed a plan to trap them. The next day, we called Willow to meet us at a cafe and told her that we found the real culprit. But when Willow arrived, she immediately got mad and yelled at me. Stop blaming it on somebody else. Maybe the person heard you when you were speaking about me during the expedition trip. As soon as Willow said that, Layla and I immediately looked at each other and grinned. What's so funny? I never told you that I spread the rumor at the expedition. I didn't even tell the principal. I only confessed that I was the one who said it. That's all. Willow looked shocked. Then we told her about Rosa and how she saw Willow's shoes. So Willow couldn't deny it anymore. Okay, it was me. I've never liked you and you think you're so perfect. So at the expedition when I overheard you talking about me like that, it made me so mad that I came up with the idea to spread the rumor about myself and then blame it on you. So you'd look like a horrible person and I'd get people's sympathy. A genius plan, right? Oh my, oh my. Who would have thought that the victim herself was actually the one who did the crime? Layla got so mad that she immediately wanted to report Willow to the principal, but I stopped her. I realized that it was partly my fault too. If I hadn't told people anything about Willow, then this never would have happened. So, well, after that, Willow and I stopped talking to each other. Actually, if I see her in the hallway, I'll purposefully walk the other way. But anyway... Thanks to this incident, I learned some valuable lessons. Never, ever gossip, as it's just not worth it. And also, choose your friends wisely. Finally, after an 11-hour flight, I arrived at LAX, Los Angeles International Airport. It's awesome! I can't wait to see my mom. You see, my dad's French and my mom's American. We used to all live together in France, but then they split up and mom moved back here. Of course, I've talked to her on FaceTime and stuff, but this will be the first time I've properly seen her in five years. I haven't visited before because mom's a super successful businesswoman and she works really hard. That meant she wouldn't have the time to provide me with the attention I needed. But now that I'm 16 and I can look after myself, I'm finally able to visit. So thanks to my dad and stepmom for my plane ticket birthday present, I'm now in sunny LA for a whole month. Not only do I get to spend time with mom, but I also get to chill out in her enormous villa. (sighs) Ah, bliss. But first, let's get all my luggage, then find a taxi to my mom's. Yeah, unfortunately, she couldn't come to pick me up since she had some work to do. But no problem, I can handle this myself. Okay, maybe I spoke too soon. It's been half an hour and my luggage was nowhere to be seen. Then, this handsome guy approached me and said, Hey, looks like your luggage has gone AWOL. Do you need any help? Cute and helpful. Hmm, I could totally get used to US guys. I showed him my ticket, and turns out, I was waiting at the wrong carousel. Oops. After guiding me to the correct one, this guy, whose name I found out was Zach, even pulled my luggage down for me. But one of my cases got stuck and burst open, causing everything to tumble out. Girl, it's not your lucky day, is it? He burst out laughing. Oh well, at least it wasn't all bad. I mean, a cute guy had rescued me, right? He helped me pick up my things, then he offered to drive me to my mom's house. After some 30 minutes, he began to slow down. I looked out the window and, oh my god! This is the chicest villa ever! The pool, the tennis court, the palm trees... It was exactly like a movie star home. I was gawping at the villa when suddenly I heard a car engine sound. Startled, I turned around to see Zack zooming away. My suitcases! I yelled. Ugh, my laptop and iPad were in there too. Oh God, why is this happening to me? And on my very first day in the US? At least I still had my phone and passport with me. Phew! so I called my mom. Needless to say, I was a distraught mess when she arrived. Who'd have thought that such a kind-looking guy would turn out to be a thief? Anyways, my mom could buy me new clothes and things, and I could still have an amazing time in her villa. 
Right? Mom led me to my room and told me to get some rest. After that disaster, I was dead exhausted, so I quickly fell asleep on the comfiest bed ever. When I awoke, it was dark outside. I realized I hadn't eaten anything since the flight, so I went downstairs and checked the fridge and cupboards. Huh? They were all empty. I was still digging around in the kitchen when my mom returned with some burgers. Sweetie, I only got back from my business trip yesterday, so I haven't had time to go to the grocery store. Let's just eat fast food today, okay? I didn't mind, as it was awesome to have dinner with my mom again after such a long time. I took a look around the room. There was barely any furniture here. My mom said that's minimalism, a trendy lifestyle in LA nowadays. Less is more. How cool is that? The next morning we went out, but what's with that old rusty car? Seeing my confused look, she quickly explained that this was only temporary as her car was being serviced. But then mom couldn't get the garage door to open. Turns out, normally she had her own chauffeur. But since I've traveled thousands of miles to visit her, she wanted to drive herself. Huh, how sweet. In the following days, my mom and I enjoyed ourselves in L.A., sunbathing by the pool, spa days, shopping. This is definitely the best vacation of my life. At least until that morning, I was awoken by a loud quarrel. Looking down from the stairs, I saw mom in the living room with a strange woman. She was pointing at the couch. Jeez, that's where I spilled soy sauce yesterday while eating sushi. Then mom appeared and sounded flustered. She told me to quickly pack my things as we were leaving. Um, mom, is there something wrong? Oh, nothing, sweetie. It's just that the couch is dirty, so let's just get someone in to clean the entire villa. Wow, mom would deep clean the whole house just because of a soy sauce stain? How rich is she? So, where will we stay this time? A luxurious five-star hotel? Or a magnificent mansion in Beverly Hills? <sighs> but then the car came to a stop in front of some shabby apartment building. Huh? This couldn't be right. Mom told me this was her friend's spare apartment, so we would stay here a few days for convenience. Elena, it's probably best if you stay away from the people in this area. They don't have the same lifestyle as us. You know what I mean. Ugh. Yeah, this place was the opposite of the villa. Cramped room, hard bed, and the bathroom didn't even have a bathtub. Since moving here, Mom didn't take me out anymore. In the evenings, she dressed up all elegantly and went out to her fancy work meetings. On one such evening, I was sitting alone watching YouTube, munching on french fries for the fifth time this week, when there was a knock on the door. I opened it, and standing there was a scruffy guy, claiming to be Frankie, the landlord's son. I told him there must be a mistake, as we were only here for a few days. Then I went to close the door, but he blocked it with his foot. Miss Anita has rented this apartment for two years. What do you mean a few days? I just saw her take a cab at the front door. Don't lie to me. No, my mom is a successful businesswoman who has a villa in Brentwood Park. Then you must have mistaken your mom for someone else. In short, remind your businesswoman mom to pay the rent. Then he sneered and walked away. How dare he say that? And why did I keep on running into jerks? Ugh! When mom returned, I told her what had happened. I thought she'd find it funny or something, but nope. Instead, she got really mad. You shouldn't have opened the door to him. I told you not to socialize with the people here. Okay, hearing made-up lies about yourself like that must suck, but did she have to be so furious about it? The next morning, I was drinking tea on the balcony when suddenly I saw a familiar face passing by down the street. My god, it was the jerk from the airport. Zack! That thief! I shouted, rushing down, but when I got there, he disappeared. I was still exasperated when a voice came from behind. What on earth are you doing screaming this early in the morning? I turned around to see Frankie leaning against the wall with his arms folded. None of your business, swindler. Huh? Swindler? What do you mean? Quit lying. I already told my mom all about you trying to con money out of me. 
Hmm, is that so? So, you think I'm the liar? Before I could answer that provoking question, I heard my mom's voice calling down from the balcony. Hey, rich girl, if you want a reality check, I suggest you come meet me tonight, and we'll go follow your mom. Mom appeared and, frowning, asked me why I was talking to Frankie. I blurted out something about asking for directions, then quickly entered the room and closed the door. Frankie was clearly a thieving, lying jerk, right? But then, why were his words lingering in my mind? I had noticed a few strange things, such as when we were at the villa, I asked Mom where the cutlery was, but she couldn't remember. But then in this apartment, she immediately got it. Plus, why was there a photo of her in the bedroom when this was her friend's place? That night, when Mom was getting ready to go out again, I spotted her necklace. Only, it was actually my necklace. The one that had been stolen along with the rest of my stuff. My dad got that necklace custom made just for me, so it was a one of a kind, but why did Mom have it? I complimented her on it and asked her where she'd got it from. Blushing, she excitedly told me that this rich man she'd just started dating had bought it for her. Then she said he was taking her for dinner tonight. I forced a smile, but my head was filled with questions. Who really was... Mom? I secretly followed my mom down the street. Suddenly, a hand patted my shoulder. Let's go. I turned around and it was Frankie. Without saying anything, I nodded and quickly got into his car. And we followed mom's taxi. Hold on. Isn't that the villa we stayed in before? After a while, a luxury car arrived, taking my mom to a nearby expensive restaurant. We peered through the glass wall. There she was. My mom was sitting there, smiling and talking with some man in a suit. Was she pretending to live in that villa to trick that man? Was my mom a gold digger? I couldn't watch any more of this, so I pulled on Frankie's arm. But weirdly, he seemed to be as shocked as I was. Um, wasn't this your idea? So why the pale face? He just shook his head and took me home. We waited in the apartment for mom to return, and oh boy... It was tense. Around midnight, we heard the door open, and Mom walked in and looked at us in alarm. She started shooing Frankie out of there, but I interrupted her. Mom, I know everything. You've lived here for two years. You're poor, and you scam rich men. Sweetie, it's not like that. Please calm down and I'll explain everything to you. So, it turns out, after divorcing my dad, she was determined to go back to the U.S. and succeed at business. But she failed, and she was so embarrassed, she lied to me and Dad. Then when she heard that I was coming to visit, she spent the little savings she had on renting a swanky villa for me. But when I accidentally spilled soy sauce on that expensive couch, she couldn't afford to fix it, so we were kicked out. As for the man I was with tonight, I ran into him while walking outside the villa. He's rich and nice. He likes me and I like him too. But what about that necklace? Mom, it's actually mine. It was in my stolen suitcase. My mom gave me a confused look. But before she could say anything, Frankie blurted out, That man's a fraud. Mom and I gaped at Frankie as he turned to me and said, I'm sorry, but I think you guys need to know the truth. Then Frankie told us how that man was none other than Zack's dad. After taking me back to the villa, Zack figured my mom was rich, so he persuaded his dad to come and flirt with her. But how did you dig up the dirt on these guys? Because I know Zack. When I saw Lana chasing him, I knew he'd stolen from her. But he's my friend. Great, so you've both been lying to me. Then I rushed into my room locked the door and burst into tears. The next morning, Mom knocked on my door, but I ignored her. Elena, I get that you're upset with me, but I've left a sandwich here, so please at least eat something. I'm really sorry. Just wanted to be the perfect mother for you. Her words caused me to sob all over again. But I can say, from the bottom of my heart, I feel sorry for her. After that, I opened the door and hugged her tightly. 
and then we both blubbered into each other's arms. I'm leaving L.A. today. With Mum. She's moving back to France with me, where she can start afresh. While I was dragging my suitcase to the taxi, Frankie appeared and apologized to me. I just shrugged and told him it didn't matter anymore. I mean, at least he came clean in the end and saved my mum from that swindler. Hey, rich girl, good luck. And, um, feel free to keep in touch. So, what now? Well, mum is settling back into French life. She has a new job and a chic apartment. I go and stay with her each weekend, and it's good to finally spend time with the real her. As for Frankie, well, we send each other lots of Snapchats. So, okay, maybe I kind of like him. I'm planning to visit him in the summer. Hopefully my next trip to the U.S. won't be as crazy as my last one. <laughs> Hi, I'm Kate, and I'm doing something totally thrilling. I'm running away. Just picturing my parents' worried faces makes me smile. Why, you ask? They deserve it for trying to send me, their beloved only daughter, to some disgusting girls' boarding school. Yuck! No parties, the grossest uniform, bossy supervisors, and no hot-muscled guys! Ooh, That place is for nerds, not me! An it girl and the founder of Clique Chic, our school's exclusive group for the hottest, most sought-after girls. To be a part of the club, you must be really fashionable, you know? I'm talking about a wardrobe full of the latest designer must-haves, manicured nails, and the glossiest hair. Only girls as dazzling as us can make the school hallway our catwalk stage. As one of us, your life will be filled with endless parties and super cute jocks fighting for your attention. Studying and homework? <laughs> That's not our thing. Those loser nerds who are chasing after us will take care of it. Hey, do you know those people? I looked outside and saw a group of bodyguards who were yelling and trying to force my cab to stop. Ugh, this was so uncalled for. 500 bucks if you can get rid of them. The driver immediately sped up. <laughs> Ordinary people will do anything for a little bit of money. He dropped me off at a service station and I quickly snuck inside and hid in the restrooms. Ew! This place was gross. Gosh, those bodyguards were loitering about outside so no one could leave or enter without them seeing. How tragic. This was so stupid. All my parents needed to do was let me stay at home for the summer. But no, they sent those bodyguards after me to ruin my life. Suddenly, a cubicle door flung open and knocked into me. Ouch, are you blind? What are those glasses even for? I... I'm sorry. The girl quickly apologized, then she bent down to pick her fallen stuff up. But when she looked up, I gasped in shock. Holy guacamole! What in the world? She looked exactly like me. I mean, at least her face did. Her style was disgusting and old-fashioned. Ew. But given my dire situation, I came up with an amazing idea. Okay, so this is weird. Do you want to make some money? And I mean a lot of money? She gave me this dumbfounded look. Ew, I hope I didn't get frown lines like she did when I screwed up my face. They were ghastly. I have a really lucrative job for you. As you can see, we have similar faces. Freaky, but fortunate. So... I need you to pretend to be me and live my rich life for a month or two. Here's my Twitter account. Just skim through it. You can learn everything about me there. It should be enough for you to play the part and avoid my family's suspicion. And here's your payment. I rifled through my bag and handed her the rest of the cash. Jeez, this must be a huge amount for her, as her eyes lit up like she was seeing money for the first time. And she immediately took it. We quickly exchanged clothes, and as instructed, she went outside to hand herself over to the bodyguards. Ah, freedom! Now bring on one long, hot summer of fun. But first, I have to go shopping. Wearing these old-fashioned, disgusting clothes made me want to puke. Oh no! 
My parents have locked all of my credit cards. I can't even buy a soya milk ice latte now. Oof. How could my parents be so cruel? The worst part is, I had stupidly given all my cash and my phone to that girl. With no other options left, I reluctantly searched the girl's bag. A few old-fashioned clothes, some stupid books, and an unbranded lipstick? Huh? Was that all? How can people live like this? But, hmm, what's this? In her small notebook was a train ticket and an offer letter to work at Homestay Allen. So, looks like she's going there for a summer job. Hopefully that homestay has a bath with scented candles and a pool for me to sunbathe by. I need to work on my tan. I was glad to get off that flea-ridden thing and breathe in some fresh air. Hmm, now where was my ride? There was a short, chubby old man holding a board with the name Clara on it. Ah, the name on the train ticket was Clara. So this meant he was here for me? Ugh, he didn't even have flowers with him and he could have at least combed his hair. So, turns out, that's Danny, the manager and owner of the homestay. Honestly, if it wasn't for the circumstances, I would never have set foot in this stupid place. Oh, how the day got worse. Without even being allowed to rest my weary feet, Danny gave me work. Housekeeping. It was a joke, wasn't it? My nails were not made for menial jobs. Life here was horrible. I had to get up so stupidly early that it was still dark out, then clean a dozen dusty old bedrooms. After that, I would do the laundry, dry the towels and bedding, fold them, and arrange them neatly into each room. At noon, I also had to help the chef here, Anna, prepare lunch, and I was also forced to wash a mountain of gross dishes. I had never done such silly chores like this at home. Instead, they were always done for me. Didn't expect them to be this exhausting. <laughs> you should put them in order, so they won't break. Ugh, where did this nosy guy come from? Are you lecturing me? I replied crankily and walked away. Suddenly... Oh no! This was the ninth time I'd broken stuff since I'd arrived here. And that wasn't counting my poor broken nails. I quickly bent down to clean up, but ouch! I cut my finger on one of the pieces. The guy quickly ran over and bandaged my wound. Bond, that's my name. Huh? What's this? Did he just wink at me? My heart was pounding. Um, I mean, he was cute. Yeah, he was really cute. Um, I'm Kay- Clara. Go do something else. Leave this to me. Realizing that I'd been staring at Bond for a while, I hurriedly got up and rushed to the kitchen. Nice to meet you, Clara. I'm your new colleague. Well, that's not so bad. At least I have someone to share my workload with and to chat. The next morning, I was cleaning the floor, half asleep, when Bond came over, put an air pod in my ear, and winked at me. Imagine you're dancing, then you won't feel so tired anymore. Okay, this sounded kinda lame, but at least no one else was around to see me, so I decided to just go with it. So I gave it a try, with Bond, <laughs> and I relaxed a little. Well, I didn't expect it to be so much fun. That night, as I was about to turn off the light, I heard a knock at the door. It was Bond. He wanted to show me a secret. So he took my hand and led me to the beach. Yes, we were holding hands, and his hand was really warm. He took me to a sandy beach and shone his flashlight at his feet. Something was moving under the fine white sand. Ew, what was that? I clung to his arm in fear. Aww, little turtles, I exclaimed as they slowly emerged from under the sand. Yes, they're cute, aren't they? Let's give them a hand. They have to get to the sea before dawn. I hesitated because I thought this was so stupid. When the sun rises, they'll be easily spotted and eaten by predators. Fine. Since Bond pleaded, 
I had no choice but to sacrifice my sleep to escort the baby turtles to the sea. Why would their mom just abandon her babies like that? Their mom protected them when they were eggs, and now it's time for them to start fending for themselves. I bet they don't mind. You see, they're all trying their best to crawl towards the sea. But it was us who helped them. Then they'll be very grateful to you. And so am I. Whoa, I never felt like this before. It felt like my heart was aching, but in a good way? Thinking about it, I suppose this was the first time I'd ever helped anyone before. Now I kinda understood why my parents did what they did. They just wanted me to be more independent and stop hanging around with those vain, show-off girls. They sure would be pleased if they could see me now, with this sweet and gentle guy. He was the total opposite of the rich boys back home. When I was hurt, he made sure I was okay. He opened my eyes to new experiences, and he didn't try to impress me with dumb flowers and expensive gifts. I've been thinking about Bond all day, and this is the 1,001st time I've peeked at him. I think I'll have to confess my feelings before I go crazy. So that evening, after finishing all my work, I knocked on Bond's door. Huh? Why was a teary-eyed Miss Anna standing there? Then she told me the shocking truth. Bond had left without saying goodbye. Panicked, I walked into the room, but there was nothing left of his. Nothing! No! This couldn't be happening! I hadn't even had a chance to confess yet! The next day, I felt so down, it sucked not having Bond here. But then in my zombie state, I accidentally picked up the newspaper at the front desk. O.M.G. On the front page was a picture of... Bond! God, I couldn't believe it! He was the son of a famous billionaire and they were looking for him! Turns out, I wasn't the only one who'd run away from home. But why did he leave so suddenly? He could have told me the truth. He could have said bye. Ugh. My untold feelings for him felt like an unreachable splinter in my side. I couldn't carry on like this. I needed to find Bond. With my meager salary, I got on the train back to the city, imagining seeing Bond again. This is without a doubt the most nervous I'd ever been in my entire life. It didn't matter how much I pleaded my case and explained that I was Bond's friend. The security guards refused to let me in. <sighs> I was about to leave when suddenly I saw Bond from afar. He was with a girl. What in the world is this? I tried to strain my eyes to see. My god, isn't that me? No. It's the girl I hired to pretend to be me. What was she doing with Bond? And why did they look so close? Could it be? Yes, it's me, Kate, here again. When I traded places with my doppelganger to avoid being stuck in some ghastly summer school, I didn't expect to end up penniless and having to work in some dusty old homestay. But... I suppose it wasn't all bad, as I got to meet Bond. So, imagine my surprise when I discovered that not only was he a runaway rich kid like me, but I also caught him hanging out with... moi! Well, the other me. Ugh! I hired her to pretend to be me, not to be with my man! Um, looks like it was time to return to my normal life. Miss... Without a letter of invitation, I can't let you in. Are you kidding me? Why do I need an invitation to enter my own home? How could they not recognize me? Right at that moment, Clara gracefully got out of a luxury car and entered my house. I shouted over to her, but on seeing me, she gave me a confused look. Then she whispered something to the security guard and went straight inside. Sorry, Miss Kate doesn't know you. Please leave. Huh? How dare she? She wasn't Miss Kate. I was. Did she really think she could treat me like this? Ugh! I'd show her who the real rich girl was. But as I was leaving, 
I caught a glimpse of myself in a car window. Oh my gosh, I looked horrendous. My once bouncy curls, perfectly made up face, and glamorous clothing were no more. Instead, I had a greasy ponytail, my skin was completely bare, and I was in worn old clothes. No wonder the security guards didn't recognize me. I barely recognized my own self. Well, well, well. How comfortable it is to be back in my room, doll up again, and just take back what's mine. How did you get in here? This is my room, remember? I can run away by myself, so you bet I can sneak back into my own room. Listen here, fake me. Mission's over. It's time you left. What mission? Are you crazy? Get your filthy hands off my stuff! Wow, immerse yourself in the role much, huh? Enough. Now give me my life back. What if I don't? Don't you dare? You think my parents won't recognize me? Seeing as I've been impersonating you for an entire month without question, I doubt it. Besides, they're on a month-long business trip in Dubai. So, who will help you now, huh? O-M-G. She was so arrogant, unruly, and obnoxious. Worst of all, she reminded me of someone. Me! Well, the old me. Why didn't I realize before how awful I actually was? Ignoring Clara's defiant face, I took out my phone and made a FaceTime call to my parents. They had to spot it was me straight away, right? Wrong. They gave us both looks of shocked confusion, and they couldn't seem to tell us apart. So they told the two of us to stay at home for the time being while they made arrangements to come back. Huh, is it that hard to distinguish your own daughter from a hick? But anyway, she'll be out of here soon enough. The next morning, we went back to school. Claire looked so trashy in her tiny miniskirt. Jeez, this wasn't a nightclub. Oh, Kate, you look outstanding. Where did you buy it from? <laughs> That's it. My friends will always be able to tell me apart from a fraud. But hang on. No! They were moving toward... Clara! Huh? Are they actually praising her? Wow, there's another Kate here. But it's a faulty version. A lame one. <laughs> my panicked feeling increased as all my friends and Clara burst out laughing. You guys don't recognize me? I'm the real Kate, the one you all idolize, the trendsetter around here. Everyone looked at me in bewilderment and then back to Clara. Look at her pathetic appearance. She's just trying to be a copy of me. After that, Clara and her friends left. Jeez, all it took was one summer away for Clara to turn into me. Ugh, why doesn't anyone recognize me? Seeing Clara living my life with my friends was driving me crazy. I was now seen as the copycat version of my own self. Ugh, no way was I losing to this crafty charlatan. So the next day, I decided to show everyone how charismatic I was. After all, form is temporary, but class is permanent. And soon, everyone would realize who the real Kate was, right? <laughs> I waited until Claire was out of the way, then I went over to my group and started recalling some of our old stories that only the real me could possibly know. When Clara returned, oh my, she looked furious. <laughs> One day, when I just entered the cafeteria, I saw my group making a nerdy girl run errands for them. Poof, your mother is the school's measly janitor. So you two are just our dog's body. Now hurry up and go get us some ketchup. When the girl was bringing it to them, one of them tripped her foot and made her face fall down on the plate of sauce. The whole group burst into laughter. I rushed to help her up and scowled at the clique chic girls. <sighs> they may have looked stylish, but beneath it all, they were monsters. But worst of all, it was my fault, as it was my group. I'd basically created them. What's wrong with her mom being a janitor? That doesn't mean she has to serve you guys. As I can see, all of your legs and arms are working fine. 
So go get stuff yourself. Wow, look who it is. Do you all believe she's just a lousy replica of mine now? The true clique chic Kate wouldn't blurt out such nonsense. Clique chic all looked me up and down, then gave me disgusted looks. Too much of a saint. What a hypocrite. Kate would never say that. Obviously, she's the fake one. Those whispers made me so angry that I turned as red as the ketchup. Fine, pretend to be me all you want. But you and I both know I'm the real me. And I'm better than ever. You won't be able to keep up that act for much longer. And then to the surprise of the others, I stormed off. That night, social media was awash with my news. Can you believe I was actually being mocked for being the copycat while Clara was being praised? Talk about ridiculous. I scrolled through my old photos and scanned over some of the thousands of likes and compliments. I'd lived in the admiration of everyone. Ugh. Maybe I needed to go back to being the arrogant and snobby old Kate, and then everything would be over. Right? <sighs> Only, I couldn't do it. I couldn't be that heartless and selfish version of myself anymore. So how could I end this whole mess of my own making? Ah, there was another way. If there's only one Kate who showed up, there wouldn't be any more fakers. Oh, seems like it's going to be a really good day at school today. But such a shame that our sweet Clara might not be able to join us. Everyone greeted me warmly as they thought that the imposter who was smeared on social media yesterday had been too embarrassed to show her face. Even so, I didn't want to hang out with these stuck-up mean girls anymore. The clique chic group should be disbanded. As I was deep in thoughts, out of nowhere, a nerd blocked my way with a bouquet of flowers. He timidly held them out to me, and people began buzzing and pointing. The girls in the group took pictures of him and urged me forward. That's our Kate with her irresistible charms. <laughs> Someone's essay's ready for next week. I hesitated, not knowing what to say. I didn't want to accept love from someone I didn't like. People started to frown at my silence. Then a few voices of doubt arose. Why doesn't she accept the bouquet as usual? Perhaps she's not? I saw red. Suddenly, I found this whole pretending to flirt with someone just to have them do our homework absurd. And above all else, it wasn't fair to him. You don't have the guts to do it, do you? Because you're not Kate. Startled, I turned around to see Clara taking the bouquet of flowers from the nerd's hand. I snatched it back angrily. He likes me, not you. He likes Kate, and I'm Kate. That Clara was just so shameless to say that. Did she really think she could be me? Did she think being mean and snobby made her the it girl? How shallow of her. Yes, if it was Kate from the past, I would have received that bouquet and made him do my homework. But the present Kate won't do that. Do it yourself. Stop relying on others to do everything for you. As for you, Clara, let me tell you this. Despite your best efforts, you'll never be me. Once a liar, always a liar, you counterfeit. I was done here. I was the real me. And if they couldn't see that, then whatever. So I walked away. Suddenly, a hand pulled me back. It was the nerd. Sorry, but I really don't like you in that way. You really don't have feelings for me? Are you sure? Upon his words, he took off his wig, glasses, and the mole on his face. Bond? Is it really you? I was so shocked that I couldn't believe my eyes. Bond handed me the bouquet and said, You won't say no, will you? Of course, how could I say no? I led him to an empty classroom to talk. Um, why are you here? And what's with the disguise? After I left the homestay, I went back home. My parents did what they always do and tried to make out like money could solve everything by throwing an extravagant party. I was lingering out of the way when, to my surprise, you walked in with your family. Huh? What party? 
Oh, he must mean Clara. He continued, I went over to talk to you, but you acted like you'd never met me before, so it didn't take me long to work out this girl wasn't you. I was worried, so I called the homestay and they said you'd left. Determined to solve this mystery, I went to your school and found everyone was in a frenzy, as out of nowhere two Kates had appeared. Both of them were it girls and nothing like the homestay Kate I knew. So, in order to suss out the real one, I disguised myself. And my plan worked. As here you are. You're such a trickster! <laughs> but I still have one question. Why did you suddenly leave the homestay that day? So, turns out his passion for marine life led him to run away from his disapproving parents and go to a coastal homestay. Only... When he realized from the newspaper that his parents were looking for him, he didn't want to get the homestay into trouble, so he returned home. You should have at least said goodbye to me. I was so down when you left like that. Did you know that? Kate, I'm truly sorry. I never meant to upset you. Actually, I'm kind of crazy about you. After that, Bond drove me home. And guess what? Looks like my parents were back earlier than expected. As for the fake Clara, she'd already fled the scene with a load of my clothes and makeup. But, ugh, whatever. At least she'd finally gone. So, what now? Well, I'm dating Bond, and I'm so happy with him. At weekends, I go to the coast and help him with his marine animal research, which is actually a lot of fun and I don't even mind having salty air lips. <laughs> I never take my parents for granted anymore, and I never force other students to carry out dumb errands for me. And of course, clique chic was no longer a thing. Everyone at school had grown used to the new and improved version of me. Obviously, I'll always be the it girl who sets the trends, but only the decent ones. I'd just climbed back into the room when suddenly I heard a voice. Jasmine, how come you're only getting home now? I turned around to find Emma standing there. That's my business. Don't come home late like this again, okay? You'll be grounded if your dad finds out. I shrugged and closed my door without saying anything. Yep, that's Emma, my stepmom. She doesn't actually care, she just pretends to. If it wasn't for her telling my dad to forbid me from singing, then I wouldn't have to sneak out to go practice like this. Different day, same story. Yet again, I've had to lie about going to my singing practice. Honestly, I can't wait to be an adult so I can do whatever I want. Dad, I'm going over to Mix to study, I said as I headed for the door. Suddenly, Emma pulled me back and handed me a bottle. Huh? Licorice tea? Drink this after practicing. It helps keep your voice clear. Then she winked at me. Huh? So she knew I'd lied about where I was going, yet still she'd helped me? Maybe, just maybe, I've been misunderstanding her this whole time? Later that night, Emma suggested we should go for a picnic on the weekend, and for once, I excitedly agreed. But when the weekend rolled around, there was this hectic snowstorm. Ugh. Emma kept looking out at the snow, with disappointment written across her face. Ugh. That's when the idea hit me. How about we have an indoor picnic? Yes, that's right. That's a great idea. And so, we set up the tent right in our living room, and we were having the best time, when suddenly, the doorbell rang. I got up to answer it, and standing there, covered in snow, was a woman. She suddenly ran at me and said, Oh my gosh, Jasmine, you've grown up so fast. I've missed you so much. Before I could understand what was going on, Dad shouted, Megan, I can't believe you have the nerve to show up here like this. I know you won't accept my apology, but you don't understand. I had to see her. I've missed her every single day. Oh my God. So that woman was my mother? I couldn't hold back my tears and ran straight over to hug her. I swear I had been waiting for this moment for years. Mom gently stroked my hair and then turned to my dad. Can I stay here for a while? Just 
to make it up to my beloved daughter after such a long time being apart, Elvis. Are you joking? Get out of my house. Dad, please let her stay. Please. But no matter how much I begged, Dad wouldn't give in. And so I turned to Emma for help. Elvis, just let her stay here. If Jasmine wants to be with her mom this badly, we should let them have some time together. Come on, darling. I looked at Emma with so much appreciation, then turned those puppy eyes towards my dad, and eventually he reluctantly nodded his head. Yay! I shouted and led mom to my room. From that day onwards, I spent most of my free time with her. We went to the movies together, shopping together, and honestly, it was the happiest I'd ever felt. One day, I was listening and humming along to my music when mom came in. Wow. So, you also love singing? It must be genetic. Back then, if I hadn't been so passionately obsessed with music, which drove your dad crazy, I might never have left you like that. Now, I regret it so much, Jasmine. I put my arms around her and softly said, After all these years, I still think about that lullaby. Can you sing it to me? Which one? I sang you many lullabies back then. It's... Don't Know Why by Nora Jones. Oh, right. That one. Then she started singing. I swear to God, her voice was like an angel. But strangely, it didn't give me any of the feelings I had as a kid. Was it because I have grown up? While I was absorbed in my thoughts, I suddenly saw Emma's shadow at my doorway. But when she met my eyes, she hurried down the stairs. Huh? Why was Emma crying? I was so confused. She must be jealous of our relationship, Mom said. Yeah, probably, since she'd been married to my dad for three years, but we'd never been close. That evening, when I went to the kitchen with Mom to set the table, she suddenly shouted, Oh my gosh! Why did Emma make chicken parmigiana? Doesn't she know that your dad hates this? Then she took the plate and threw it in the trash, saying she would order takeaway instead. Huh? Dad hates this? He always complimented Emma on her signature dish. Before I could react, Emma entered the room. As soon as she saw her chicken in the trash, she glared at Mom. Things then got so awkward. Emma had skipped dinner. Mom also tried to start a conversation with Dad a few times, but he ignored her. Ugh, I felt so bad for Mom. In my Dad's eyes, there was only Emma now. But my mother had done nothing wrong. She just wanted to pursue her passion. Later that night, I was heading to the pantry to get some snacks when I heard Emma yelling at Mom. Megan, for old time's sake, I didn't bring up anything from the past, but you can't just do whatever you want. How dare Emma yell at my mom like that? As soon as Emma left, I ran over to my mom asking her what had happened. She hesitated for a while, then told me the whole story. It turned out Mom and Emma used to be in the same band when they were young. And since mom was always the lead singer, Emma had begrudged her ever since. Perhaps she has never gotten over it. Ugh, I didn't expect Emma to be so mean. So from that day on, I began to show my attitude towards Emma. I didn't let her go to the parent-teacher conference like I had promised before, and I even forbade Mick, my best friend, from talking to her every time he came over. Mom, how did you and Dad meet back in the day? Well... Back then, your dad was a waiter at the lounge I used to sing at every weekend. We quickly fell in love and started leaving love letters for each other at our secret spot. Ew, how cheesy. It's called romantic, you silly. At that time, we put our initials at the end of every letter. Suddenly, there was some noise at the door, and I turned to see dad standing right behind us. What do you mean, our initials? It represented our two favorite characters' names from that movie. Yes, yes. It was the initials of Monica and Quincy in the movie Love and Basketball. Dad gaped at Emma in surprise as she continued. I was the one writing letters to you that year. But when I got to the meeting spot, I saw you and Megan together. So I left. Dad and Emma looked at each other, then turned to stare at Mom. Actually, back then I liked you so much that I pretended to be Emma. But it's not that important. In the end, you were still into me and we got along really well, right? I can't believe you lied to me like this for all these years. Then Dad angrily left the room, followed by Emma. As for Mom, she was sitting there, tears pouring from her eyes. Okay, so Mom was definitely in the wrong. But did Dad need to treat her like that? 
Who doesn't make mistakes from time to time? And anyway, it's because of my mom's mistake that I'm even here, right? From that day onwards, the atmosphere in the house was so intense. Dad ignored mom, and Emma always gave mom hateful looks. Until one day. I'd just gotten home from school when I saw my dad excitedly running towards me saying, Emma is pregnant. You're going to have a little brother or sister. Wow. I'd always wanted to have a sibling. I couldn't believe it. So that night, my family threw a party to celebrate, and mom also congratulated dad and Emma. And thanks to that, the tension between the three of them started to ease. Phew. But a few days later, for some reason, dad found out that I'd lied about going studying with Mick. He was furious and grounded me for a week. I was sullenly playing on my iPad when mom entered the room. Emma must be the snitch. Now that she's pregnant, she wants dad to be angry with you, so he'll give all his love to her and the baby. Well, that just made sense. The other day, I'd even seen Emma whispering something to dad, and as soon as he heard it, he got mad. Ugh, such a two-faced woman. I had to sort this out, and so I set up a fun plan for my stepmom. One time, I made her orange juice using powdered cheese, and she ended up spitting it out all over dad. <laughs> then I unscrewed the shower head to add blue food coloring, and that's how I gave her a Smurf makeover. It was hilarious hearing her horrid scream from the bathroom. Another time, I snuck into Emma's room, trying to put flour in her hair dryer. I was rummaging through the bedside table looking for her hair dryer, when suddenly I saw a DVD labeled Jasmine 0311. Huh? What's this? Why was my name on it? Curious, I went back to my room to play it, and then I couldn't believe my eyes. On the screen, Emma was carrying a baby and singing a lullaby to her. This melody. Wasn't it the song Don't Know Why? So that baby was me? But Emma couldn't sing. Could she? Her voice was weak and sounded hoarse. What did this mean? I rushed to show my dad the DVD. Emma told me not to talk about this, but since you already know, I won't hide it anymore. Then he told me everything. Turns out my mom left for a rich man when I was only two years old. And it was Emma who came and helped my dad take care of me during my younger years. Oh my gosh. What? So all those memories of my mom's warm hugs and lullabies were all actually of Emma? A feeling of guilt welled up in my heart. I had to do something to apologize to Emma. So the next day, I asked Mick to go to the mall to help me buy her a gift. As I was passing a coffee shop, I suddenly saw my mom sitting with some guy. Without thinking much, I quickly pulled Mick to a nearby table and eavesdropped on them. Honey, how's the money? You know how pushy the creditors are, and they're getting kinda aggressive. Don't worry, it won't be long now. My daughter's on my side. She'll help me kick her stupid stepmom out. Then my ex-husband will soon follow her wish and volunteer to give me money. What? What was going on? Had mom come back just for dad's money? I was about to go confront her when my phone rang. It was dad. Jasmine, go to the hospital right away. Emma is in the emergency room. By the time I got there, I saw my dad sitting outside the ER with his head in his hands. After a while, the doctor came out and said, Both mother and baby are okay. Next time, please pay more attention to the patient's food allergy. How could you eat stuff you're allergic to? You must be more careful, okay? Yeah. Emma always took good care. It didn't make sense. Unless... my mom... I was about to tell dad about what I'd seen at the mall when mom suddenly appeared, eagerly asking about Emma's situation. Unable to stand her pretense any longer, I shouted, Mom, drop the act. It was you who did all of this, wasn't it? Jasmine, what nonsense are you uttering? Furious, I immediately told them the whole story I've heard. Megan, I could forgive you for the old letter story, and for trying to sabotage my voice, but the fact that you wanted to harm my baby is unforgivable. It turns out the stuff from the past that she mentioned before was that my mom harmed her to destroy her voice. So that's why dad didn't let me sing, for fear that it would cause Emma pain. Suddenly mom burst out laughing. <laughs> I don't need your pity. You were so lucky to have such a beautiful voice and a wonderful man by your side. And even now, you're still trying to take the life that should have been mine. Megan, give it up already. 
You need to stop this. Mom was about to say something, but I interrupted her. Mom, please just go. I'm so ashamed to have a mother like you. Then I burst into tears. She got up and left, without even so much as a glance back at us. Emma took me into her arms. I was afraid that you would be disappointed. That's why I hid everything from you. I'm sorry for treating you so badly. She gently patted my head, and I felt like I was back in my childhood, where she'd held me and sang lullabies. It was so comforting. Finally, peace has returned to my family. I'm so fortunate to have Emma as a stepmom, and pretty soon, my little bro or sis will be here, and I can't wait. Mom, come here and see what Agnes has done to my dress. Oh no, what now? Look at this, Mom! It's crumpled. This is all your fault. I told you that this requires hand washing. That means by hand! Oh, don't cry, honey. I'll buy you a new one. You can give that one to Agnes. It's yours now. New dress. Happy, huh? Can we go right now, Mom? Then let's have pizza after that. I'm so tired of Agnes's pretentious fine dining dishes. Of course, honey. Yeah, I know. That sure looked like a scene from Cinderella, right? Only stuff like that was a daily occurrence in this house. If I was adopted, then it'd be easier to understand why Mom favored my sister over me. But nope. I am also her actual daughter. Growing up with Jenna as my big sister was a nightmare. She's always been the golden child while I was treated like a thorn in their side. If something broke, then I got the blame. When Jenna stole my things, then mom just said I should be flattered. Then there were the birthday parties. Over the years, Jenna had it all. Fairy themed ones, magicians, a petting zoo, and cupcake towers. As for me, all I ever got was a card with a wrinkled $20 note in it. It was the same thing with studying. If she broke her string of D's with a C, mom rewarded her with jewelry and makeup. Me? Just one C out of usual straight A's, and mom say, Oh, why did I even get my hopes up? Sometimes I do wonder if all this shabbiness is because Jenna's always been pretty and popular. She's basically a mini-me version of mom. While I guess I'm more reserved and I don't really look like mom. Anyways, despite living in a house full of darkness and unfairness, I still have my own passion, which is culinary. To be honest, I'm addicted to those TV cooking shows and always try to find ways to follow them. My dream is to become a head chef in a five-star restaurant. At school, Jenna always blanks me. She hangs out with this group of girls who are all obsessed with the same things she is, such as makeup, trendy clothes, and TikTok. Jenna does look gorgeous, so it's not surprising that boys usually buzz around her in the hope of catching her attention. Anyway, forget Jenna, as I have my best friend Ruth right here. Girl, I swear to God, if I were you, I'd tear up some of her clothes just for my own relief. Nice idea, <laughs> I said while playing with my tray of food as usual. It looks so good. Very appetizing. Startled, I looked up to find a pair of dazzling eyes staring back at me. Hi, I'm Roy. That's very neat-handed of you. Before I could say anything, he winked and turned away to his table. That was close, or else he would have seen my tomato red face. <laughs> Looks like someone's on the hot guy's radar. Shut up. He was just being friendly. But no, that night when I got home, Roy in fact did message me. And we had a really long chat. He even asked me to join him for lunch the next day. Yay! This was so exciting. I'd entered the canteen to find Roy was already sitting there waiting for me, but I quickly spotted Jenna's group passing by, and the last thing I need is trouble from my evil sister. So I was actually thinking of walking away, but right at that moment, Roy grinned and waved over at me. Oh, gee, that hot boy over there is waving at you, Jen. A girl flattered Jenna before I could even answer Roy. Jenna quickly fixed her hair, then smiled awkwardly at him, but he walked straight past her and over to me. Here for you. What kind of first class dishes do we have today? I smiled at Roy and had no choice but to sit down with him, ignoring Jenna's furious glare. Despite the awkward Jenna situation, lunch with Roy was amazing. We started hanging out loads more after that. He's cute, funny, and very supportive towards my culinary dreams. Then one day, Roy handed me a cupcake with a frosted heart on it and asked me to be his girlfriend. Yippee! This was so exciting! So, of course I agreed, but only on the condition that we kept our relationship low-key. 
I'd never had anything of my own before, so if my mom and sister didn't know about us, then they couldn't tarnish it, right? Falling in love is a magical thing. I was just so happy and full of life all of the time. Even doing chores for mom and Jenna didn't dampen my mood. I thought you were only into cooking. So what, you like laundry now? Psst, don't tell me you want to be a fashion designer next. I ignored her and carried on with what I was doing. Actually, I ignored all of mom and Jenna's mocking jibes. The truth was, I was way too happy to let them bother me anymore. Soon, Jenna's 17th birthday party arrived, and this time, she insisted on having it at this trendy restaurant in town. All of our relatives and her friends were invited, but I decided not to go. It's not like anyone wanted me there anyway, so I didn't think it'd matter. But to my surprise, on the day of the party, Jenna knocked on my bedroom door and begged me to come. Please, Agnes, I want you there on my special day. It won't be the same without you. Then she passed me a bag and left. I opened it, and inside was the most beautiful dress. Okay, so Jenna being nice was strange, but I must admit it felt good to feel wanted for once. So it looks like I was going to the ball. Wow, the party was insane. I'm talking banners, balloons, a whole booth devoted to presents, a menu only serving Jenna's favorite foods. I was sipping my drink, feeling awkward, when Jenna addressed the room. Hey, everyone. Thank you so much for coming to my 17th birthday party. Now, there's a very special guest here that I'd like to introduce to you all. It's my new boyfriend, Roy. I watched with horror as Roy appeared out of the crowd and let Jenna link arms with him. Huh? What? Why was my boyfriend with my sister? I glared straight at him, but he couldn't meet my gaze. This was terrible. I felt like I couldn't breathe. Panicked, I rushed outside to get some air. Everything of yours will soon be mine, no matter how well you hide it. I turned to see that Jenna was standing there, a huge smirk on her face. How could she be this shameless? I shoved past her and went to find mom. She was shouting at the waiter to bring out more drinks. I went up to her and spluttered out what Jenna had done and how upset I was. Jeez! Stop making such a fuss about it. Jenna's your sister, so just be happy for her. Besides, Roy is far more suited to her than you. Oh, that's it. I can't stand this selfish family anymore. I'm leaving. Yeah, go. Disappear just like your no good father did. That night I showed up at Ruth's house with a bag of my stuff and a teary face. But I knew this could only be temporary, so I still looked around for somewhere else to stay. And eventually I applied for a job as a grocery cashier at a 24-7 gas station. Well, at least I had shelter. One night, a drunk man walked in. Hmm, he didn't look so good. Nothing could lighten a person's mood better than great food, right? The store was quiet, so I took some of the ingredients available and used them to prepare a delicious-looking dish for him. Thank you so much, sweetie. I'm Keith. You have a culinary talent. If you want a better opportunity, come find me. Before I could thank him, he left. Let's see, bar owner? Hmm. I wasn't old enough to work in a bar, though. I spent the next month juggling school with work, life, and oh boy, was it exhausting. But when I asked for my salary, my boss laughed in my face, saying that since I was only 16, he could only pay me for far less hours than I'd worked? What? That wasn't fair. I worked my butt off on sometimes 12-hour-long shifts. But when I complained, he threatened to report me for stealing food from the store. Ugh, I'd only taken expired food that couldn't be sold anyway. Feeling bummed out, I just quit, and then left. I wandered around the street for a while, then looked up and found myself standing in front of that man's bar. Well, I had nowhere else to go, so I stepped inside and there was Keith, but... Huh? He looked so different. Other than this bar, I also own a fine dining restaurant uptown. If you want, I'd love to train you to become a chef there. Whoa, this was so amazing that I cried with joy. In order to be able to stay overnight at the restaurant, I told him that my parents had passed away and I'd run away from the orphanage. And the man agreed without questioning me twice. Time passed by, and you know what? I loved working at the restaurant. As for Keith, he's such a kind-hearted man. We grew so close and he became like a father to me. I guess we were two lonely people who helped each other. So it made sense when he asked to adopt me. Then one busy evening, I was taking food to a table, but then I stopped dead. Sitting there were Jenna and Roy. On seeing me, Jenna sneered out, Oh, you work here? Now that explains why my appetizers were gross. Roy looked embarrassed and begged her to be quiet, which only made her worse. 
Then seeing what was going on, Alistair, the restaurant supervisor, came to my defense, but it only made Jenna even more heated. Isn't the customer always king? Why are you defending that dumb girl? Miss, this is a fine dining restaurant. Please mind your manners. Agnes here is not only a very talented chef, but she's the owner's daughter, which makes her my boss. So I think I'm within my rights to defend my superiors. Jenna rolled her eyes at me, then walked away in anger, not forgetting to reply, Just you wait, Agnes. Then, seeing my glum face, Alistair invited me out for ice cream after work. Keith happily told us to go and said he'd close the restaurant. As I was licking my ice cream, I noticed people around us shout, Fire! Fire! So I pulled Alistair's hand and ran after them. As the flames came into view, my heart sank when I realized they were coming from... It was the restaurant! Oh no! Keith was still in there! Without giving it a second thought, I charged in there to find him. It was so smoky and impossible to see, but I couldn't give up. Suddenly, I started to go dizzy and lightheaded. Then an arm grabbed me and pulled me out. It was Alistair, and standing next to him was... Keith. Phew. A few days later, the police called Keith. They'd found the culprit who started the fire. As soon as I walked into the police station, I couldn't believe my eyes. It was Jenna. But most surprisingly, when Keith saw my mom, they both turned pale and gave astonished looks. Huh? Did they know each other? So yeah, turns out Keith's mine and Jenna's actual father. When dad was young, he hadn't built his career, but just spent all day in the kitchen. So he was always despised and scolded by my mom. In the end, he couldn't take her belittling of him anymore, so he left. Only unbeknown to him, mom was pregnant with me at the time. So the story she said about dad running off with his mistress was all lies. I got it now. She despised me because I took after my dad, not her. As soon as Jenna realized he was our dad and he was rich, she put on her little Miss Sweet act and begged for him to be her dad again. But he just gave her a stern look and said, That fire of yours could have killed us all. Now you have to live with that. Then he took my arm and led me out of there. I always believed my life would one day be better, but I never imagined it'd be as good as this. I now have an amazing dad, a job I'm passionate about, and people who generally care about me by my side. It just goes to show that everything works out perfectly in the end. Ah, now what better way is there to spend a Saturday afternoon than lying on the couch watching a feel-good movie with lots of snacks? Ugh, I suppose I better get that. O-M-G, who is this? He's the most gorgeous boy I've ever seen in my life! I stared at him in open-mouthed amazement, but then I saw him gazing back at me and realized I needed to say something. Hey, how may I help you? Hi, I'm Jaden. My mom and I have just moved in next door. Oh, in that case, welcome to the neighborhood. Jaden smiled as he held a box out to me. W- was this a g- gift for me? Already? I took it from him and blushed out a thanks. I opened the box and saw that it was full of delicious-looking cookies. My mom baked them. She finds that people tend to be far more welcoming when it involves cookies. We chatted for a bit longer. Then he said he had to go and help his mom unpack. Aw, why did this moment have to end already? The next day at school, I couldn't wait to find my bestie Stella and tell her about my drop-dead gorgeous neighbor. But as it happens... She found me at my locker and immediately started gushing about this hot new boy. Hmm, I needed to see how handsome this guy was. My chance came at lunchtime when Stella pointed over at the new boy who was currently being pestered by Anna, this stuck-up girl from class. I squinted my eyes. O-M-G. The hot new boy was none other than Jaden. I watched on as Anna fluttered her eyelashes at him, then flicked her hair behind her back. Ugh, she needed to give the flirting a break. It was so tragic. Suddenly, Jaden saw me, smiled, then hurried over to me. Hi, Laura. Oh boy, am I glad to see you. He leaned in close to my ear and whispered, That girl is kind of freaking me out. Please, can we get out of here? Then to my surprise, he took my hand and led me away. I could see the shocked look on Anna's face. 
and I couldn't help but smirk back at her. Ha! Huh, take that, Anna. He's holding my hand, not yours. Then after school, Jaden and I walked home together. Turns out, as well as being the hottest guy on the planet, he was also really sweet and funny. <sighs> back home, I saw Jaden's mom, Cynthia, watering her window box. On seeing us, she waved us over, then insisted on inviting me inside for homemade lemonade. We all got on so well. Looks like I'm going to have a boyfriend soon. One whose mom loves me. <laughs> From then onward, Jaden and I hung out lots. We had lunch together, we went to the library together, and always walked home together. I was pretty sure the girls at school were super jealous, especially Anna. One day, during P.E., the teacher told us we were playing dodgeball and assorted us into two teams. Anna, who was on the opposite side, wouldn't quit aiming at me. I tried my best to dodge her throws, but bang! She got me! Now, listen to me. Guys like Jaden don't like ordinary girls like you. He's mine, so quit chasing him. Furious, I yelled. I'm not chasing him. He's already my boyfriend. Um, actually, not. Yet, I was pretty sure Jaden liked me, too. Just you wait. He'll soon tire of you and come running to me. Ugh. Anna was so annoying. I needed to get my frustrations off my chest, so I ranted to Stella about her. Forget Anna. No one likes her anyway. As for Jaden, it's obvious he likes you. He's just new here and probably feels too shy to ask you out. Yeah, you're probably right. He must just be shy. But, ugh, I know Anna won't quit chasing him. Then you should make your relationship with Jaden official. Stella had a point. If Jaden was too shy to ask me out, then maybe I should take the initiative. Then Anna would have no choice but to back off. Ha! Tonight was the night. So I texted Jaden, I need your help with something. Let's meet at 8 p.m. by the slide in the park. But then he messaged back saying he couldn't meet tonight as he had to help his mom with something. Right that moment, my dad arrived home earlier than usual and announced that he was taking me and my sister Megan out for dinner. Ooh, this restaurant looked nice. I walked in alongside Megan and... Huh? What were Jaden and his mom doing here? Then my dad walked over to Cynthia, kissed her on the cheek, and said, Hello, honey. Jaden and I shared astonished looks. Then we peered at the adults for an explanation. Laura? Megan? This is Ms. Green, the lady I told you about. What? I mean, I knew Dad was dating a woman named Ms. Green, but I had no idea she was Jaden's mom. Then, before we knew what was happening, Dad got down on one knee and pulled out this diamond ring and asked her to marry him. And you know what? She said yes! Oh, no. No, 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 no! They can't marry! Because then Jaden will be my brother! Megan looked delighted and hugged them both, while I stared at Jaden in bewilderment. Don't get me wrong, I really want my dad to be happy, but why her? And what about me and Jaden? After that, Cynthia seemed to always be at our house, baking cakes, humming while she dusted and cleaned up, and exchanging gooey looks with my dad. Ew. Then one day, she insisted that Megan and I went wedding dress shopping with her. She tried on this one dress, and yeah, okay, she looked pretty good in it. But when she asked me what I thought about it, I just shook my head and said, well, it's not very flattering, is it? She tried on several more dresses, but I managed to find fault with them all. Then, when I noticed how disheartened she looked, I patted her shoulder and said, Don't worry, Cynthia. You can always postpone the wedding until you find a suitable dress. She looked a bit taken aback, but then she just smiled at me and said, That's okay, Laura. I'm going to go with the first one. Ugh. Anyway, now the dress was chosen, so at least I could go home now, right? Wrong. 
as on the way home, we passed an arcade. Cynthia led us there and then excitedly challenged me to a game of air hockey. Then I said jokingly, Fine, I'll play, but if you lose, you don't deserve to be my mother. And guess what? She won! Ugh! And worse still, Megan wouldn't quit giving me dirty looks for the comments I'd made. Jeez, I was just joking. What is wrong with you today? I plopped down on the couch and blurted out everything. She'd take my side, right? Um, turns out, no, she wouldn't. What? You and Jaden aren't even official. But Dad loves Cynthia. They both deserve happiness. So stop being a brat about it. Then she stormed off to her room. Ugh, I feel like I'm going crazy. I have huge feelings towards Jaden, and I know he feels the same. So why can't my sister be mature enough to understand that and support me? I needed to vent to someone. Luckily for me, I had Stella. Why does no one care about my feelings? I can't be Jaden's sister. Um, sorry, Lara. I don't know what to say. Suddenly, from the nearby table came a lousy voice. So that's the reason why Jaden has to hang out with you? You're pathetic, Lara. Turns out we were so lost in conversation, we didn't notice Anna and her flock sitting at the table behind us. Actually, we've been into each other for ages. It's not our fault our parents made some dumb decision. Anyway, whether we can be together or not, it doesn't change the fact that you bore him so much that he'd choose watching paint dry over being with you. How dare you! She was about to grab my hair, but right at that moment, a hand stopped her. It was Jaden! That afternoon, on our walk home, I finally came clean to Jaden. I like you a lot. I have always been since I first met you. I know you like me too, but you think it'll be awkward because our parents are getting married. Maybe if we just tell- Laura, you're such a sweet girl. And I do like you. But just as a sister. What? How could he say that to me? He had to like me. Didn't he? Feeling an unexplainable amount of shame and embarrassment, I ran away from him. As I lay on my bed and rubbed my tear-stained eyes, all I could think about was how unfair this was. So, by the time Dad called me down for dinner, and I walked in and saw how happy he looked, my anger got the better of me and I yelled, I hate you, and I hate Cynthia! How dare you try and replace Mom! Then I rushed back to my room. You really upset Dad. You know that, right? I didn't answer. I was also upset, but no one seemed to care about my feelings. Dad said we come first, so if you really feel this strongly about it, then he'll cancel the wedding. To be honest, I'm real mad with you right now. So? What about me? You're so immature and selfish! I didn't understand how my own sister could be so uncaring. So I screamed out. So what? You don't care that mom's being replaced by some fake woman? And what about me? Why does no one care how I feel? Oh my god, Laura, for once, this isn't about you! Megan rolled her eyes at me, then stormed off. Finally, everyone quit going on about the stupid wedding. But why didn't I feel good about this? Cynthia didn't seem to be coming round to our house anymore. And I noticed how Dad's cooking seemed to get worse and worse, until he stopped altogether and just ordered takeout. Meanwhile, Jaden wasn't anywhere to be seen at school. Stella asked around to find out where he was, and turns out he'd left, as he was moving back to his old town. No way! After school, I rushed straight over to his house and barged inside to find him and his mum packing. Are you... moving away? Yeah. I moved here to settle down and start a new life with Randall. And this house is for Jaden's future. But the wedding's been cancelled, so... I quickly asked Jaden if we could talk outside. 
My mom's cried so much. Randall's her soulmate, and she can't stay around her if she can't be with him anymore. The most annoying part is that she agrees with him that the kids must come first. So, I hope you're happy now? Oh my god, what have I done? His words were like a stab to my gut. Oh no, this was all my fault. I was so obsessed with Jaden that I didn't stop to think about what was best for everyone else. Without saying another word, I ran back home and burst into the kitchen where Dad was drearily staring into his iced coffee. Dad, you deserve to be happy with Cynthia. So, please go and tell her how you feel before she leaves for good. But it was too late. Cynthia and Jaden had gone. Just kidding! <laughs> nah. Actually, Dad managed to catch Cynthia just in time, and he told her how much he loves her and can't live without her. So, guess what? Yep, they got married, and now they're both happier than ever. I've learned the hard way that being selfish and inconsiderate of other people's feelings for my own gain just makes everyone miserable, including myself. So, now we're one big happy family. And I suppose having Jaden as a brother isn't actually so bad after all. Mom, come here and see what Agnes has done to my dress. Oh no, what now? Look at this, Mom. It's crumpled. This is all your fault. I told you that this requires hand washing. That means by hand. Oh, don't cry, honey. I'll buy you a new one. You can give that one to Agnes. It's yours now. New dress. Happy, huh? Can we go right now, Mom? Then let's have pizza after that. I'm so tired of Agnes's pretentious fine dining dishes. Of course, honey. Yeah, I know. That sure looked like a scene from Cinderella, right? Only stuff like that was a daily occurrence in this house. If I was adopted, then it'd be easier to understand why mom favored my sister over me. But nope, I am also her actual daughter. Growing up with Jenna as my big sister was a nightmare. She's always been the golden child, while I was treated like a thorn in their side. If something broke, then I got the blame. When Jenna stole my things, then mom just said I should be flattered. Then there were the birthday parties. Over the years, Jenna had it all. Fairy themed ones, magicians, a petting zoo, and cupcake towers. As for me, all I ever got was a card with a wrinkled $20 note in it. It was the same thing with studying. If she broke her string of D's with a C, mom rewarded her with jewelry and makeup. Me? Just one C out of usual straight A's, and mom say, Oh, why did I even get my hopes up? Sometimes I do wonder if all this shabbiness is because Jenna's always been pretty and popular. She's basically a mini-me version of mom. While I guess I'm more reserved, and I don't really look like mom. Anyways, despite living in a house full of darkness and unfairness, I still have my own passion, which is culinary. To be honest, I'm addicted to those TV cooking shows and always try to find ways to follow them. My dream is to become a head chef in a five-star restaurant. At school, Jenna always blanks me. She hangs out with this group of girls who are all obsessed with the same thing she is such as makeup, trendy clothes, and TikTok. Jenna does look gorgeous, so it's not surprising that boys usually buzz around her in the hope of catching her attention. Anyway, forget Jenna, as I have my best friend Ruth right here. Girl, I swear to God, if I were you, I'd tear up some of her clothes just for my own relief. Nice idea, <laughs> I said while playing with my tray of food as usual. It looks so good. Very appetizing. Startled, I looked up to find a pair of dazzling eyes staring back at me. Hi. I'm Roy. That's very neat-handed of you. Before I could say anything, he winked and turned away to his table. That was close, or else he would have seen my tomato red face. <laughs> Looks like someone's on the hot guy's radar. Shut up. He was just being friendly. But no, that night when I got home, Roy in fact did message me. And we had a really long chat. He even asked me to join him for lunch the next day. Yay! This was so exciting. I'd entered the canteen to find Roy was already sitting there waiting for me, but I quickly spotted Jenna's group passing by, and the last thing I need is trouble from my evil sister. So I was actually thinking of walking away, but right at that moment, Roy grinned and waved over at me. 
OMG, that hot boy over there is waving at you, Jen. A girl flattered Jenna before I could even answer Roy. Jenna quickly fixed her hair, then smiled awkwardly at him. But he walked straight past her and over to me. Here, for you. What kind of first-class dishes do we have today? I smiled at Roy and had no choice but to sit down with him, ignoring Jenna's furious glare. Despite the awkward Jenna situation, lunch with Roy was amazing. We started hanging out loads more after that. He's cute, funny, and very supportive towards my culinary dreams. Then one day, Roy handed me a cupcake with a frosted heart on it and asked me to be his girlfriend. Yippee! This was so exciting! So, of course I agreed, but only on the condition that we kept our relationship low-key. I'd never had anything of my own before, so if my mom and sister didn't know about us, then they couldn't tarnish it, right? Falling in love is a magical thing. I was just so happy and full of life all of the time. Even doing chores for mom and Jenna didn't dampen my mood. I thought you were only into cooking. So what, you like laundry now? Psst, don't tell me you want to be a fashion designer next. I ignored her and carried on with what I was doing. Actually, I ignored all of mom and Jenna's mocking jibes. The truth was, I was way too happy to let them bother me anymore. Soon, Jenna's 17th birthday party arrived, and this time, she insisted on having it at this trendy restaurant in town. All of our relatives and her friends were invited, but I decided not to go. It's not like anyone wanted me there anyway, so I didn't think it'd matter. But to my surprise, on the day of the party, Jenna knocked on my bedroom door and begged me to come. Please, Agnes, I want you there on my special day. It won't be the same without you. Then she passed me a bag and left. I opened it, and inside was the most beautiful dress. Okay, so Jenna being nice was strange, but I must admit it felt good to feel wanted for once. So it looks like I was going to the ball. Wow, the party was insane. I'm talking banners, balloons, a whole booth devoted to presents, a menu only serving Jenna's favorite foods. I was sipping my drink feeling awkward when Jenna addressed the room. Hey everyone, thank you so much for coming to my 17th birthday party. Now, there's a very special guest here that I'd like to introduce to you all. It's my new boyfriend, Roy. I watched with horror as Roy appeared out of the crowd and let Jenna link arms with him. Huh? What? Why was my boyfriend with my sister? I glared straight at him, but he couldn't meet my gaze. This was terrible. I felt like I couldn't breathe. Panicked, I rushed outside to get some air. Everything of yours will soon be mine, no matter how well you hide it. I turned to see that Jenna was standing there, a huge smirk on her face. How could she be this shameless? I shoved past her and went to find mom. She was shouting at the waiter to bring out more drinks. I went up to her and spluttered out what Jenna had done and how upset I was. Jeez, stop making such a fuss about it. Jenna's your sister, so just be happy for her. Besides, Roy is far more suited to her than you. Oh, that's it. I can't stand this selfish family anymore. I'm leaving. Yeah, go. Disappear just like your no good father did. That night I showed up at Ruth's house with a bag of my stuff and a teary face. But I knew this could only be temporary, so I still looked around for somewhere else to stay. And eventually I applied for a job as a grocery cashier at a 24-7 gas station. Well, at least I had shelter. One night, a drunk man walked in. Mm, he didn't look so good. Nothing could lighten a person's mood better than great food, right? The store was quiet, so I took some of the ingredients available and used them to prepare a delicious-looking dish for him. Thank you so much, sweetie. I'm Keith. You have a culinary talent. If you want a better opportunity, come find me. Before I could thank him, he left. Let's see. Bar owner? Hmm. I wasn't old enough to work in a bar, though. I spent the next month juggling school with work, life, and oh boy, was it exhausting. But when I asked for my salary, my boss laughed in my face, saying that since I was only 16, he could only pay me for far less hours than I'd worked? What? That wasn't fair. I worked my butt off on sometimes 12-hour-long shifts. But when I complained, he threatened to report me for stealing food from the store. Ugh, I'd only taken expired food that couldn't be sold anyway. Feeling bummed out, I just quit, and then left. I wandered around the street for a while, then looked up and found myself standing in front of that man's bar. Well, I had nowhere else to go, so I stepped inside and there was Keith, but... Huh? He looked so different. 
Other than this bar, I also own a fine dining restaurant uptown. If you want, I'd love to train you to become a chef there. Whoa, this was so amazing that I cried with joy. In order to be able to stay overnight at the restaurant, I told him that my parents had passed away and I'd run away from the orphanage. And the man agreed without questioning me twice. Time passed by, and you know what? I loved working at the restaurant. As for Keith, he's such a kind-hearted man. We grew so close, and he became like a father to me. I guess we were two lonely people who helped each other, so it made sense when he asked to adopt me. Then one busy evening, I was taking food to a table, but then I stopped dead. Sitting there were Jenna and Roy. On seeing me, Jenna sneered out, Oh, you work here? Now that explains why my appetizers were gross. Roy looked embarrassed and begged her to be quiet, which only made her worse. Then seeing what was going on, Alistair, the restaurant supervisor, came to my defense, but it only made Jenna even more heated. Isn't the customer always king? Why are you defending that dumb girl? Miss, this is a fine dining restaurant. Please mind your manners. Agnes here is not only a very talented chef, but she's the owner's daughter, which makes her my boss. So I think I'm within my rights to defend my superiors. Jenna rolled her eyes at me, then walked away in anger, not forgetting to reply, just you wait, Agnes. Then seeing my glum face, Alistair invited me out for ice cream after work. Keith happily told us to go and said he'd close the restaurant. As I was licking my ice cream, I noticed people around us shout, fire, fire. So I pulled Alistair's hand and ran after them. As the flames came into view, my heart sank when I realized they were coming from, it was the restaurant. Oh no, Keith was still in there. Without giving it a second thought, I charged in there to find him. It was so smoky and impossible to see, but I couldn't give up. Suddenly I started to go dizzy and lightheaded. Then an arm grabbed me and pulled me out. It was Alistair and standing next to him was Keith. Phew. A few days later, the police called Keith. They'd found the culprit who started the fire. As soon as I walked into the police station, I couldn't believe my eyes. It was Jenna. But most surprisingly, when Keith saw my mom, they both turned pale and gave astonished looks. Huh? Did they know each other? So yeah, turns out Keith's mine and Jenna's actual father. When dad was young, he hadn't built his career, but just spent all day in the kitchen. So he was always despised and scolded by my mom. In the end, he couldn't take her belittling of him anymore, so he left. Only unbeknown to him, mom was pregnant with me at the time. So the story she said about dad running off with his mistress was all lies. I got it now. She despised me because I took after my dad, not her. As soon as Jenna realized he was our dad and he was rich, she put on her little Miss Sweet act and begged for him to be her dad again. But he just gave her a stern look and said, that fire of yours could have killed us all. Now you have to live with that. Then he took my arm and led me out of there. I always believed my life would one day be better, but I never imagined it'd be as good as this. I now have an amazing dad, a job I'm passionate about, and people who generally care about me by my side. It just goes to show that everything works out perfectly in the end. I was grabbing a book out of my locker when some guy's shout startled me. Hey everyone, the results are over here! Oh, it's just the results of the Mind Buzz, our annual high school general knowledge competition. 